my name is uh, Nitin Nayak and uh, this is my research project and uh, I need a way of uh, cleaning up landfill gas uh, by means of a flow through catalytic membrane reactor. Uh, my colleague uh, Yusuf Motam uh, and my uh, advisor Dr. Theodore Sarsis and uh, Dr. Pokyaniko Fokus. Uh, so these are the things that uh, we'll be covering today. Uh, my motivation and background for this project, uh, the characterization of membranes, uh, the reaction studies that we have done, and the future work that needs to be done. Um, so why landfill gas? Uh, Environmental Protection Agency, that's EPA, uh, estimates that there are around 6,000 landfill sites in the U.S. And uh, in all, in total, they generate around like 600 billion cubic feet of methane. That's uh, enough methane to power around like 5 million homes every year. So, uh, but we currently are using only one tenth of that, that, that energy potential. And why is that? That's because landfill gas is not a clean source of energy. It comes with all these small contaminants inside it. And uh, the EPA has estimated that there are like 94 contaminants uh, inside landfill gas, out of which 41 are uh, halogenated and sulfided compounds. So, uh, what happens if we just pump landfill gas through it? If we pump, la uh, if we pump landfill gas through any, uh, any say, uh, energy uh, producing uh, machine, like a turbine or something, uh, this is the result of that. Um, as you can see, like uh, all the uh, inner parts of the turbine, the metallic parts have been corroded due to acids and there are like layers of salt deposited on the turbine. So, uh, in order to prevent this, landfill gas needs to be cleaned up and that's what this project is all about. So, uh, what are the current uh, landfill gas cleanup technology? Adsorption, that's, that's the most widely used method today. Uh, activated carbon is uh, one of the prime uh, is, is the primary way of adsorption, but uh, the problem with activated carbon is that uh, it's only the marginally effective due to the huge number of uh, species that we have, and it's not that uh, it's not it cannot absorb like all the components. It has different absorption properties for different components, and different like uh, higher absorption properties for some other components. So, uh, the, and also the problem is that these, uh, this uh, activated carbon actually stores the components, which again brings us to the problem of regeneration. And in regeneration, we are ultimately letting out the components back into the environment, where it's going to cause uh, environmental problems. So, uh, the, the second method is the absorption method, where uh, water scrubbing is the primary method. Now, just like activated carbon, water scrubbing is also a good method, but uh, the problem with water scrubbing is, again, it cannot dissolve like all components. There are certain components which uh, have low solubilities in water. And uh, also for regeneration, we need large boilers, which, again, are uh, much more energy intensive. The, the next uh, technology is chilling process. Chilling process is also a good technology, but the, the, the disadvantage with this technology is that we have to cool the landfill, the, the gas, to minus 70 degrees Celsius. That's a uh, heck of a lot of uh, energy you're wasting there for refrigerating units. Um, and finally, the last method is uh, catalytic oxidation. Now, catalytic oxidation is a good method, but the problem in today's catalytic oxidation technology is that we need an excess of 400 degrees Celsius temperatures to actually make an effective uh, uh, cleaning of landfill gas. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to improve this last uh, this last method. Okay, so what we're trying to do is uh, we're trying to prove this last method with the help of uh, our, our technique called as a flow-through catalytic membrane reactor. So what's a flow-through catalytic membrane reactor? Uh, basically, uh, as you know, if you have like a cylindrical membrane like what we use, uh, there are three sides of this uh, membrane reactor. One is the field side, the reject side, and the permeate side. In uh, a flow-through catalytic membrane reactor, what we do is we close the reject side completely so that the gas actually travels through the permeate side. And uh, that's, that's the concept that we're using. Now, the trick here is that the, the, the gas passing through the permeate side flows through pores so small that uh, it flows through a, a certain 
certain set of conditions known as the Nielsen flow regime. So, what's a Nielsen flow regime? Basically, uh, a little bit of yeah. Okay. Uh, so, everybody knows the kinetic theory of gases, like uh, gases, gas molecules are elastic in nature, uh, they are uh, constantly in motion, and uh, they are bouncing off walls and every, in the end of walls of the containers every time. So what we do in Nixon flow regime is that we, we pass the gas through pores that are so small that uh, the gas molecules for traveling, they have to actually bounce off the walls of the pores. Now, this technique actually if we, so what we thought is uh, if we line, up, line the insides of these pores with a catalyst, such as like platinum, what we use, the gas molecules have to bounce off these uh, platinum catalysts and poof, we get like a hot product right there. So uh, that's that's the basic technology that uh, we are trying to uh, use here. So with that in mind, these are the objectives that we have prepared for for our uh, for our research. First one is uh, characterize the membranes. That's uh, by doing permeance test. And then uh, after that, impregnate the membranes of the catalyst and perform an EES analysis to find out where the catalyst is actually located. And after that, uh, we do the reaction studies on the halogenated and sulfided compounds in the landfill gas. Uh, for that, we find the effect of temperature and conversion in catalytic membrane, compare the catalytic membrane with other types of reactors, especially monolith reactor, and uh, finding the products of the reaction that we get. So let's start with the characterization of the memory. To do the permeance experiment, this is the setup that we used. Uh, at the heart of the setup is our reactor, which has the, uh, the cylindrical memory that I just shown before. And uh, we pass the gas, and like as I, as I told you, like uh, we close the reject site uh, completely. And, and uh, like if you see that wire over there, we close the reject site so that the, all the gas flows through the permeate site, and we measure the permeance of, the, of this memory. Now, this is the result that we got uh, for the uh, permeance test. Uh, we, we did with two uh, gases, helium and argon, at uh, three different temperatures. And as you can see, the, the permeance, the, uh, the Nixon percentage is well above 80% for most of the gases, for most of the conditions. And uh, this is actually very good for us because the more Nixon percentage we have, the more uh, cat, uh, contact with the catalyst uh, that the we gas will have. After that, uh, we impregnated the membrane with a platinum catalyst. We used uh, hexapropyl platinum acid as a precursor, and uh, we run an EDS analysis along for the distribution of uh, platinum along the thickness of the membrane. And like I said before, we, the, uh, uh, the platinum is mostly deposited in the uh, 100 angstrom region of the membranes as you can see in the EES analysis. A little bit of platinum is deposited in the front hand line strung and the support has almost negligible amount of platinum deposited. So this is also a good result for us because um, the platinum, actually we need more more platinum inside the pores of the membrane and the smaller region of the pore is this 100 angstrom region. So uh, with this, we move on to the uh, reactor studies. 